hear about the reality in these meetings and with masters and on the YouTube and with Ramaka Maharaj and reading the Zagadatta Maharaj, you hear about the reality and then you engrave this reality through time spent with your own self, just sitting, you know, feeling this subtle presence and, and just going in, just diving into this, this I am. You know, Nizargadatta Maharaj talked about the same thing. All his free time, he was looking at this I am. He was just being with himself and being with you always. Be with yourself with self. That's really the, the whole thing. This would be the tilling. Like if you go out in a field and you till the soil, this speaking and listening and all of that is tilling the soil, preparing the soil, basically. Uh, you know, preparing the fact that, hey, I've now heard that I'm not the body. I've heard that I'm formlessness and that this body-based experience is brought about by the illusion of separation, which is not true. I know this now. Now I just need to investigate and deeply understand this, engrave this reality. And I do this in my daily activities as they're arising. I know, oh no, I'm formless and this whole thing is not happening. So then when the mind flow starts, there's no identification with this flow of thoughts as my thoughts, my mind, and I'm in this world. And I hear the, the good news is Nizagadatta Maharaj says, the good news is you are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. You weren't born, you're never going to die. You can't be cut, you can't be divided, you cannot be harmed. Nothing has ever happened because all of this is brought about by the illusion of separation due to the belief and the wrong concept that I'm a body, which you are not. So then when this is discarded, you just, okay, so this is the truth. So now I must discover this truth inwardly in my own self, in my own experience, I must discover this. And it has to become as, as anxious as, you know, I must know myself. And now I've heard the good news. Now I have to investigate because it can be told to you. Yes, you're not body. You're totally enlightened and enlightenment actually was the concept that came along with the body, which you are not. So all of these things can be told, but now they need to be directly experienced and direct experience is simply remaining with your selfless self, this subtle sense of presence, until all the other things are no longer paid attention to. You're just paying attention to yourself. And that's it. And then you can say, oh, yes, okay. In this illusory form-based world, I could label this experience as enlightenment. However, prior to being this and prior to entering this form-based existence, which is not true, I knew nothing of enlightenment, nor did I need enlightenment. I only needed enlightenment when I had the false belief that I was a person in a world searching for myself. Uh, John, is there any difference between beingness and the appearance? Appearance means well, like this physical object, experiencing the physical world. Beingness is the sense of existence and everything that appears on that sense of existence is projected through the consciousness or through the I am experience, whatever you want to say. Prior to this sense of beingness, there was nothing. And yet beingness has appeared to that that was there prior to knowing itself as beingness, this sense of existence. Beingness, I am, consciousness, all these things are like interchangeable. But the main thing is prior to the first experience, I exist, there was nothing. Yet, see, we say there's nothing. And yet this experience of existence has appeared to that something which is nothing. Who is, giving the, who is imparting reality to the existence or appearance? Is it prior to beingness or is it the I am? Without I am, you can't experience. First, you experience your sense of existence, which then projects this dream world, dream waking world, the same as a dream world when you're laying down at night. You lay down at night, it's the body is inert. 
but this sense of existence mixed with consciousness projects a dream world and, and then appears very, very real. Within your dream, you can knock on a table. It appears solid and real. And yet, when you wake up, you know it absolutely wasn't real, even though the appearance was very much real. So in the waking state, you know that when this body falls, all of this that's happening appeared for a time to be really real, but it absolutely was not. It was an appearance within the formlessness that you are. And the birth, so-called birth, is the appearance of this sense of existence and identification with the body form. Spirit clicked with the body and you say, I, that's how Maharaj talks about. This existence, it says, oh, I'm this body. And then this whole new experience, this perception of I'm an object and there are other objects and everything that I'm perceiving is from this wrong perception. So all the data, all the knowledge that I collect is absolutely false because it all begins with the fact that I'm an object and I'm having these experiences, but I'm not an object. I'm the formlessness in which all this appears. There is no, there's nothing. And yet again, this nothing, which was everything that did not know anything, had no needs to know anything, suddenly felt the sense of existence for whatever reason, who knows, it's a spontaneous thing. And in that exact moment, just as when you're laying down in sleep, this sense of existence appeared and boom, a world was projected. But you're prior to that. See, you know that you are, whether this you are sense is there or not, because this you are sense has appeared to you. If there was no you, then this you are sense could not appear to anything. Whom would this appear to? And that you are. So all of this illusory experience can be thrown aside. We talk about, oh, I don't like the politics and I don't like the way this is going and I don't like how I'm growing old and I don't like how the doctor's doing this. But none of that is true. That's in the dream. When you lay down at night and you had a dream and the doctor told you, in three days you will die. And in the dream, you're like, oh my God, in three days I'm going to die. I better get my affairs in order. I better do this and that. But when you wake up from the dream, it wasn't true. The experience wasn't true. So in this dream, this waking dream, when the doctor tells you, you have three days to live, when this body leaves, you will wake up. And you will no longer be having this dream experience of being a body in a world. You'll just be with yourself. But there will be nothing other than yourself to know. So it'll seem like there's nothing. But there will be no one there to say there's nothing. You see? But there has to be something for something to appear to. The knock, knock on the door. Who's there? Nobody's there. The nobody's there is the sense of presence that's felt in the body form. Somebody's there to say nobody's there. Somebody's there, something that you are, is there to, for this appearance, this beingness to appear to. And then once beingness is here, boom, dream world. And then we can get really lost for hundreds of years in spirituality of this birth and that birth and this karma and I can't do this and I've done very bad things and this is this. And this. But all of that is within the dream. Just like if you lay down at sleep and you thought to yourself, wow, I've done these. I think uh, Sri Ranjit Maharaj, Sri Ranjit Maharaj has talked about you kill someone in your dream and then you go the next day and you turn yourself in. Mr. Police, I would like to report that I murdered someone last night. Hey, oh, really? And he takes the notes and this and that. And it's dream. You didn't kill anybody. You may have had that experience, but it was not true. Nothing in the form-based world is true because you're not a form. <laughs> so it's like, that's the, the long and short of it is nothing in this form-based experience is true because you're not a form. Maharaj says it, you are not body, you were not body, you are not going to remain the body. Body is not your identity. Nothing in this body world is true because you are not a body.
Your body has all these body relations, but you're not a body. You're formlessness, absolutely formless, with no nothing. And now that you know this, the enlightenment label is now you know. Okay, in the next moment you impress this reality. I am absolutely formless. There's nothing in this world that I need. There's nothing to do, but I'm, I'm here. I'm using this body form. So as long as this body form is available, I go about my duties and do my duties and whatever it is, I do to the best of my ability. But I'm not a doer and there's no deeds. If something doesn't go exactly correctly, I don't sit there and be like, oh my God, I can't believe I made that mistake. No, I made the mistake. Okay, pass. Next thing. Because it's not true. And naturally, you're going to communicate with other people, so to speak, because it's your own self and you know this. You're not seeing them and wondering, like, because I believe I'm separate and I have this own little separate world of thoughts and all this in this body form, that there's another body form that is also having separate thoughts and all this. There won't be that because there's no you thinking. There's you using a body and you using all these other bodies and just, just, there's, it's like, uh, like you're actors on a stage. Okay. But uh, then it, it appears like uh, it is beyond what we are discussing. Even beingness also cannot contain it. Just well, again, know. beingness is only known after you know yourself. Prior to beingness, there's nothing. You know this. So if there's nothing, then all of this is absolutely illusion. You don't have to pay so much attention to it. It's only when I believe I'm a body that even this understanding has to come. Because prior to beingness, was there a need for understanding? No, there was nothing. Just you. <laughs> That's it. So only when you believe yourself as separate do you need an understanding because this concept is impressed. I am somebody else and I need to find this, this self, this selfless self. It's not true. Beingness is a word that was created within the form-based delusion so that you can speak about the formlessness that you are. You can lead yourself back to the formlessness while in this form-based delusion. You can say beingness, you can say uh, sadhana, you can say meditation, you can say all these things because you now know them since you're using this body form. Prior to beingness, you were not knowing these things. So all of these are body-based knowledge and they can be discarded. As a matter of fact, the faster you discard this body-based knowledge, the less likely you are to believe this delusion that you are a body, which you are not. It really does boil down to accept your selfless self. There is no God, no Brahman, no Paramatman, no master. Nothing is there. You are that. When all experiences end, there you are. And that's what, that's what, that's why Maharaj says, don't get hung up in the words. Don't get hung up in the, the idea is we're tilling the soil, planting the seed. The seed is going to grow on its own. Now all you have to do is remain with yourself. Discard everything. Absolutely everything. Because nothing is true. You're formless. This is a long dream. In the long dream, I am somebody else. But you're not anybody. You're everybody. You have no dog in this fight. <laughs> yeah, like if you say that uh, everything is myself, I am everybody, <clears throat> that also in a sense is ultimately not true, correct? Like that's simply... You know, correct, because only you can be everybody when there's an illusory world based on this feeling that I exist, right. which the feeling I exist is the first primary illusion and created all this.
Kathleen doesn't have her little video on. I just saw that. Um, it is on, but it's frozen. Oh, okay. It, it, I don't know why, but this has been happening. Um, every once in a while, it'll okay. unfreeze, and I don't seem to have any control over that. Um, I could talk to the okay. Zoom people and find out, but anyway, I'm here. <laughs> okay, okay. No, I just didn't know if even the recording, since it's going through your uh, thing, if it's just a, a big gray box. No, it, it, it is recording. It says, you know, up in the oh, corner, okay, okay. It, it's doing that. But for some reason, it's just not showing. The okay. thing freezes. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> One of those mysteries of the uh, internet. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> In a jan, in a listening you makes froze, you know. When as a child, when I used to play, I, I mean, as a body form, I, so I used to jump from tree, from a small tree to the ground on the sand. Okay, while jumping off, there is a you know different kind of experience while you know falling as a free falling body while listening about that selfless self listening again and again it's similar you know there is no weight of this body there is no weight of you know all the concepts or uh, assumption of so on so or even the spiritual knowledge just like, you know, a leaf falling up. Yes, yes. Because every time the mind wants to run this way, it's brought back. No, prior to being this. And the mind, well, prior to being this. Mind can't really think of any concepts prior to being this. How? <laughs> like, okay, what is prior to being this? I can't even... See, we can say illusion or maya and then that becomes a concept because we say, oh, yeah, everything is illusion. But then we just use illusion as if it was saying that every day is just, you know, it's just a normal day. It's just illusion. But this is not, we have to be careful with this concept. When you have no concepts of prior to being this, prior to being this, there's not even the illusion to speak about the things that are in the illusion because there's nothing. <laughs> That's where you throw it all away with the prior to being is the, the body, the mind, the knowledge, the ego. You yes. Just, like dump it. <laughs> yes. Prior to being this and after leaving the body, you don't have any of these experiences that you had while you had this little form based experience in between. This form based experience, uh, I think Nizargadatta Maharaj says it's like a fever. And everything's done within this fever. This form-based existence is just that. It's a fever. And the fever will pass. The form-based existence will be no more. And you'll just be back to your regular self. Which you are anyway. You're no longer imagining yourself to be all these other things. Because it won't be there. The fever will have broken. You'll be back to your natural state. And the nice thing is, you're back to your natural state. And you know this, so now within this body form, within the fever, you just do as, okay, I'm given this body. Okay, it's good. I use the body. I do things. I can go out and experience this form-based existence. But I know it's not true. So I don't have to worry. I don't have to. The same one that took care of you in the womb when you were being formed is taking care of you now. And that's your own selfless self. So there is no in-between. 
there's no there's no need to really worry about anything. It's dream, long dream. I am a body. After the experience of body is finished, then you are, but you'll have no existence of knowing you are because there will be nothing other than you to know. It's just you. Yeah, the, Sig um, the Sagaratha Maharaj says that um, someone asked him about what about my duties in working in the world? And he said, yes, you owe it to the consciousness to, to participate. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> but actually there's no person there to participate because if there's no such thing as the individual, then it's just basically um, a spontaneous happening. It's simply witnessing what one is involved in, I guess, um, you know. Well, you're, a chess, you're a chess piece on the board. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to be moved around by the consciousness. Mm -hmm your body form, so to speak, is going yeah. to be moved around on the chessboard by the consciousness. And just as in the chess game, every move and every piece is exact what it needs to be. But again, prior to being this, this consciousness and all of these things. But while you're in this bubble of illusion, then you're going to be moved around. The energy is, is not stagnant. It, it won't just have you sit and, and not move or do anything. For one thing, this body needs uh, taking care of, just like your car. If you sat your car in the garage and didn't drive it for 20 years, and then you started it up, you would probably have some issues. So this body, it requires food and uh, water, rest, and some activity, you know, so the muscles don't atrophy, you're moving about and such. So this consciousness is doing all of that anyway. And the thing is, when you know this, you're moving about and, and these things are occurring and you do the very best you can in the moment and you leave this because you know the outcome is not in my control because I'm not even a doer. This whole doing thing is being done through this body form and it has nothing to do with this body form doing anything. This body form is a dead body animated for a time by this presence within this consciousness, which has appeared to you. But we roll it back prior to being this. There was nothing. Knock, knock on the door. Nobody's there. But that nobody there was nothing. The I am appeared to that which was nothing. The one behind the door that says nobody's there was there to say nobody's there. You know, when you talk about the prior to being this, I think Ranji would always say, for instance, that, um, you know, knowledge is important in the beginning, but you got to go beyond knowledge. Um, and I think knowledge is simply the consciousness. And basically, um, that's all true. While we're in the world, you know, we're kind of being moved around like a chess piece. And it's kind of like, um, there is a sense that we're not the doer. But ultimately, <clears throat> one's got to go beyond that, which is maybe going back to prior to being this that's moving beyond knowledge itself. Exactly. Well, it's not knowledge. Also, yeah. Go ahead. There's I'm sorry. There's a little ego in that knowledge. Uh, you know, he would say that some teachers will take you up to knowledge or they'll take you up to yeah, knowledge basically, but they don't go, they don't take you beyond. Um, and it's, that's the step that's really, and I think the Sagarata says it's, pretty easy to go beyond the body and mind, but it's very challenging to go beyond the consciousness, you know, with the consciousness, it, the yeah. presence with presence. Yeah, that's, that's the beyond sitting mm -hmm. there and, and, and being with the I am so that it's just this I am without any kind of add ons to it. And then there is a dawning. This presence appears, you are the knower of this presence. That's the beyond. Because Again, that puts you in the prior to beingness, prior to the presence appearing, the presence has appeared to you. You are prior to every experience, even the experience I exist. Yeah. So this consciousness with consciousness, I am with I am, your meditation through mantra, inviting the invisible listener. The invisible listener sees that, oh, so that I, 
I am that. I am that that knows I am. And that's beyond the knowledge. The knowledge is I am. Yeah. The, the knowledge is the sense of presence, the sense of existence. That's, that's why uh, the knowledge is not like body knowledge of things I know. And that's why in the books it will say, it's not knowledge of that kind. It's not knowledge that you can actually acquire. It's a knowledge of inviting the attention of the invisible listener. And the invisible listener then sees this sense of presence. You're with it. But who's with that sense of presence? It's not the body mind that's with that sense of presence. It's the formless invisible listener that is seeing this sense of presence. And then this sense of presence is known as an add-on to that you are. And this presence, once seen, all of the entire illusory world has appeared on your presence. The seer is true. The seen is not. Because all of the scenes are appearing on the presence and you are the knower of presence. You are that that knows you are. Remain there. We talked about before, like a window. Here's presence. I'm on this side of this window that's presence. The world and all those things are on the other side of presence. There is presence, and I'm here. I'm the... I'm observing the presence the same as I would observe the space in the room. And that's why it's good too if I'm sitting and I look at the space rather than the objects that are within the space and I know, okay, I'm more subtle than space because I can perceive space. So this sense of presence, I am prior to this sense of presence. And when I'm just seeing this sense of presence and that's all I'm seeing, then so that I. And from this perspective or perception of seeing presence or being with presence, you're one with this presence. Because you know that, oh, this presence is, is here as the flower. I smell the flower with my eyes closed and the aroma allows me to know there's a flower. This sense of presence that I'm sensing allows me to know that I am. Whether this presence is here or not, I am. When the presence is sensed, I know I am. And when there is no sense of presence, I won't know I am, but I am. Mm -hmm.
I guess at some point, uh, a sense of interest in things uh, must change to some degree. Uh, like most, most of the time I'm interested in this and that. And uh, other times I can uh, Uh, I don't know, not, where it, interests sort of lose some of their, uh, their, you know, they're no longer, they just don't present themselves as necessarily things to be interested in. All, all, but they're still always there for me to turn my interest to. But like you said, uh, you say sometimes that you, um, you like to uh, uh, sort of enjoy the uh, the bliss of being here. Mm. That, that's a type of interest too, in a way. But there's oh, a yeah. there's total a complete interest in presence. Yes, S sipping on the nectar of immortality and just the bliss that I am experiencing, and being able to have a body to experience this bliss. That's very nice. The so body is a cup that I can dip into the nectar of immortality and sip on all day long. So the, that's at that point, like, go ahead. At that point, the interest is no longer anything particular. It's just, oh no no no! Why would I bother myself with all the illusion when I can sit, literally, and be with the bliss of my own self all the time? The only time when I'm not with the bliss of my own self is if I try to give myself away to remove your passing things and put my attention on something. Yeah. Even when my attention in the mundane life is on something, I'm sipping on my own selfless self. That nectar of immortality, that presence is always, mm, yes, that's why I have a body. I have a body so that I can be just basking and bathing in my own selfless self. There, there, uh, Maharaj calls it selfless self intoxication, and it really is the best intoxicant in the entire universe. Your own self, just to sit and revel in your own presence after, and that's why Maharaj says meditation is so important because once you invite the attention of the invisible listener, and this selfless self intoxication begins, you will become an addict for your own self. You will shun all other things. Oh, no, no, no. See, I don't want to get all involved in this thing because I'm enjoying myself. I'll do this thing that's in front of me, but I'm not going to give myself to it. No, no, no. I'll remain with myself with self while I go through my daily mundane life. That's, my exactly, what I was, that's exactly what I was kind of like. You know, like there are things that require sort of like um, – you know, a certain kind of react involvement, you might say. But at the same time, you, you know, like there's a real reluctance <laughs> to do it, but you kind of like do it, but you know, like um, you play the part, I guess, but you're not really um, in it, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Exactly, exactly. You know? And what you're talking about, I think, is what devotion really is, you know, just that uh, sipping on the yes. nectar. That's what devotion is. Uh, yes. You know, I've always, you know, I've wondered how to, you know, I know the um, the path of knowledge and the path of devotion come together in this particular lineage, you know, and that's where I think it meets. Um, you know, that um, I mean, that that's fun. That that's really that's what I really enjoy the most. You know, like in those mornings when you're just kind of like there and you just you know you're completely with it. Um, I mean, there are disturbances that come. You know, thoughts will come and so forth, but by and large, it's really a very pleasant thing. Then you got to get out and go to work. <laughs> yeah. But you, you can do your routine yeah. activities. Yeah. You can, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you can be in yeah. the activity of, of, of yeah. the world and just be with yourself. <clears throat> just sipping on the nectar. Oh, so nice. And you'll also notice it's kind of a reward, like we talked about, mm, excuse me, God being a jealous God. That means... I need to pay attention to that sense of presence, that sense of I am, 100% of the time, all the time. When I don't, I don't feel that. So I want to be with me. And what will also happen 
is if someone that I may, my mind might say, or start to churn that I'm somebody, and here's something that I don't like. Well, instead of going through the whole process of I don't like this thing happening, I remain with myself. I can observe that this thought that I don't like this has flowed by, but no speaking has happened, no disturbance of my own self. And these are very beautiful experiences because then I can begin this dialogue with my own selfless self and continue to check this I am somebody else and what I might be attempting to think a thought in the moment about something that isn't, but I'm, I'm creating this sense that this is an important thing. No, I remain with myself and this is just an outward flow. But you'll see this. This is why, like we, we talk about, oh, I have this situation in life I don't like, or this is not so good, or I'm not so happy, or this or that. But these are the instances that your own selfless self is creating for you to remain with yourself and pass this, whatever this happens to be appearing. Because it's an appearance on spontaneous presence. It's not true. Remain with yourself. Again, God is a jealous God. The devotion... And the knowledge, the knowledge is I invite the attention of the invisible listener. And the devotion is, I want nothing more than this. I don't want money. I don't want power. I don't want sex. I don't want any of these things, too much food. None of this. I just want to be here with my own selfless self. And if I have to create and I am somebody else in the moment to try and grab some desire that my mind is presenting to me that says, I want this. No, I want this selfless self. I want this God. I want this. I am. I want this sense of presence. I do not want anything else. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So a desire may arise, but the desire quickly goes away. Why? Because I'm remaining with my selfless self. I remain with that sense of presence, that, that, blissful joy that I can sense because I am the holder of this body. And because I hold a body, I can feel this. I can sense this. And I just, and the more I pay attention to my own self as self, the more I invite the attention of the invisible listener, the more I want to remain there. I mean, I literally, I become an addict. That's the only way you can really describe it. I become an addict for my own selfless self, and I desire selfless self intoxication more than anything in this illusory world. Good experiences can come, bad experiences can come, I remain with myself. And if I remain with myself long enough in that way, then I know, oh, this, even the sense of presence, I am not. I'm the knower of the sense of presence. Now, how to describe this knower, I don't know. H how to describe this knower, I don't know. This knower knows. This knower knows the sense of presence. I don't know what this knower is, but I know this is myself that knows this sense of presence. Then I don't bother myself with, like, you know, you know, kundalini or more of this or more of that or any of these things. No, no, no. I just remain with myself. I'm just, just enjoying self and self intoxication. Let the world do what it wishes to do. I'll just remain with myself. Since the world is illusion anyway. It's like life is one long garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> yeah. You know, didn't know the garden was going to last for 60 years or 70 <laughs> years, however long. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because you, you never left Eden. This whole story about Eden and, and being one with God and all these sort of things. And then there was the concept or the illusion that you were somehow kicked out of Eden because of the knowledge of good and evil. No, this knowledge of good and evil has appeared. It will disappear. And everything's fine. You never left Eden. You're here. Yeah, it's not the knowledge of good and evil. It's the knowledge, It's the belief that it's real. That's the problem. It exactly. Yeah. Knowledge is just all this body-based knowledge wasn't before you acquired this body. You had no existence of good and evil. You had no concepts of anything. 
So after leaving this body, there will be no concepts of good and evil because you need a body in order to uh, experience or have concepts. In order to have the illusion of experience, you need a body. But you're not body. But you get to hold a body, and that means you get to experience yourself. Want yourself more than anything. Be addicted to selfless self. Selfless self-intoxication. I only want this. I bow to the masters because this master is my own selfless self who's told me, remain with your selfless self. You're not body. You were not body. You're not going to remain the body. This is all there is. That you are. So remain there. So bow to the masters. And if something troubling happens during the day, I remain with myself, and I can even, before I can remain with myself in silence, I can remain with myself and say, Master, this is appearing, and I can feel in the body there's some commotion, but you told me I am not body, and I was not body, and I'm not going to remain the body. That this experience is absolutely illusion, and it's impressing through my mind that this experience is important because of my belief in the body, which I am not. Master, I remain at your feet. What about um, interest in music? Uh, I, I, uh, I'm very much involved in listening to music. I'm a DJ and everything, and I have a, I've been collecting records my whole life, and I've okay. just always had great uh, love of all kinds of music. You know? And but it does seem that when my focus goes into interest in music of the experience of listening to it, it is it is more, a little bit more limited than than say the blissful state. Uh, so so actually, if I'm I'm giving my interest to music, I'm I'm basically shutting myself off from uh, having not uh, that's where it's, it's uh, this this uh, idea of it, uh, enjoying um, nectar and mortality is a uh, I would I'm, I think of it more not so much as a choice but as a, a almost like a knack that you can develop or something but uh, I could be wrong there but, no, I mean, it's like a muscle in the gym. You keep going back to the invisible listener. And what we talked about, God is a jealous God. If you keep giving yourself away to all these things outside and not remaining with yourself, then, of course, that sense won't grow. Nizargadatta Maharaj says, remain with the I am. It will reveal all the secrets. Just remain with the I am. And quite frankly, you can listen to music. I listen to music, but I don't give myself away for it. The presence is formlessly formless. I'm never not formless. In using this body, this body has ears that's hearing this music. But the silence is where this music is arising from. The nothingness is where this music is arising from. And I'm using these ears to hear. But I remain with myself. So you're able to maintain an awareness of yourself, even whether the music's there or not. It's not maintained. It's just you are. I mean, there's no real... It may be in the beginning as you're erasing this illusory concept of that you're a body and that you're someone, you'd have to maintain, once this sense was growing, you'd maintain by attention. But there's no maintenance because you're not giving yourself away anymore. So from the perspective of I am formless and there's no thinking, there's no thought, there's no body, there's no world and this is uh, here, but I'm remaining with myself, then you're just not giving yourself away. It's not really that you're, 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 you're no longer giving yourself to anything. And yet you can still do your job. I have a job that requires me. I can't just tell my boss, I'm sorry, I'm going to sit here and just ohm in my chair all day. I can't do that. <laughs> you know, be fired. <laughs> and even though this form-based illusion is illusion, within the form-based illusion, I don't want to lose my job, so I do work. This is my duty. 
just like <laughs> Arjuna on the battlefield. Krishna said, your duty is to go and, and perform and to, to, to win this battle. Now, you don't go into it egoistically and say, I'm going to have 50 heads on my wall or anything like that. No, you're not a doer, but you need to do what's right in front of you in that moment, using this body form, knowing that no one is dying and no one is being killed, and there is nothing other than the formlessness, which is reacting and acting through these body forms, you still need to do your job, do your duties. And at the same time, you can enjoy the experience of this form-based illusion because you are holding a body. You just never lose the fact that you're not the body, you're holding a body so that you can be in this this place that you wouldn't be able to experience if you were just in your regular formless state. You have to have this illusion of separation brought about by I am a body so that you can have this dualistic kind of experience. Otherwise, you couldn't experience anything because you are all there is. There has to be something other to experience. So in this dualistic uh, consciousness, creates this dualistic understanding of hot and cold and day and night and birth and death and all these sort of things that can be experienced because the formlessness that you are wouldn't be able to have any experience or do anything in that way as your own self. But now that you're holding the body, enjoy. You can listen to music. You can, you know, bike ride, feel the wind in your hair. Go outside, nice sunny day. Hell, go to the beach and sit and have a nice tan and have the water splashing and go and play in the water using this body form, but knowing I am not body, I was not body, I'm not going to remain the body. All of these body experiences are absolutely illusion, but I can certainly enjoy the illusion. I just don't want to, I cannot enjoy the illusion more than my own self. Because if I begin to get back into the ditch or fall into the ditch that this world is true and I lose myself, then I need to refresh my memories once again with mantra. Mantra invites the attention of the invisible listener. I refresh my memories. Oh yeah, this is illusion. I remain with myself, but I participate in the illusion to the extent that I'm beholder of this body. So why not? You know, Sagarata said that um, the mantra purifies the vital breath and um, breath and thought are one and the same. Um, I notice, for instance, if you were thinking a lot, you're breathing more. And when the thinking slows down, the breath slows down. And, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I was, um, it really hit me, I don't know, really powerfully, you know, like, it, 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 you know, like mantra does purify the mind. It, it purifies the, uh, the breath and the mind, the thinking or whatever. And, um, you know, like to be, be absorbed in doing the mantra can be a very powerful tool. It, it's kind of like, yes. I think, uh, Siddhartha Meshwara said, it's like a, a, a spiritual room. It's like sweeping things out. Yes. You know, and you got to keep sweeping because if the wind's blowing, blowing leaves into the house, you know, you got to sweep them back out, you know. Yes. And so finally, there's no more leaves coming in. But, um, you know, just basically, um, that mantra is, can be very powerful in, in that way. It's just, it, does, it purifies uh, the mind. Um, and then, I guess, it just disappears. Once well, it it's erases good, all the concepts. Yeah. All the illusory concepts are erased slowly, silently, permanently. And then there's nothing to think about because you know that there's no, there's nothing. The mantra allows you to see this. And that's why Maharaj says, sit for meditation, but also just in my own experience, just keep with your mantra all the time. When you're in traffic, mantra. Whenever you catch yourself not doing, you know, being involved with mantra, mantra, because mantra is inviting the attention of the invisible listener, which is the sense of presence that you will feel, that you can feel the sense of presence, and then you'll know I want this and not that. And when these things pass and I start to look like I want something, rather than, okay, I can't find the presence in this moment. I can't pull myself back or rain the rains like it's talked about in Bhagavad Gita. 
Instead of reining the reins or pulling myself back, no, Maharaj has given the simple tool of mantra. And you will continue to use mantra until you understand that there's the mantra is running naturally through this body. You're actually the listener of the mantra, the invisible listener that's being, the attention is being drawn by this mantra, which is clearing away all the illusory concepts, which are impressing and keeping you pressured inside the belief that you're a body, which you are not. It seems like the um, mantra gives you a perspective, which then when you compare it with what the mind comes up with, it doesn't feel, um, there's like a feeling level on which it feels off or something. Because yes. if you're, it gives you, um, you know, like you said, the purity of, makes everything else look tar <laughs> makes everything else look tarnished. Yes. So it, it gives you this perspective where you may not be as interested um, in what it has to offer because it can't compare with. It, it's like okay, you know, you've got gold, and then somebody comes along and gives you some full full gold. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you say, no, I don't think so. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because it gives you that perspective of what is true and what isn't. Yes. The mantra is erasing all the illusory layers that when the desires form, there's no longer a desire for something. Okay, mantra, mantra, mantra. A desire comes, it goes, and you see, oh, that was nothing. And you can do dishes while in mantra and moving because there's no thoughts that are impressing. I am somebody else that these thoughts can attach to. These sticky thoughts can't stick to you because there's nowhere to stick the sticky note. And the mantra erases slowly, silently, permanently all the illusory concepts. Even the concept, I have to do mantra because then it's just, it's you are. And, and this is, this is really, if, if you had to say in, in, in one nutshell, it would be remain with your selfless self, be with you always. All of this is passing. Master has said, everything is illusion. I have full trust and faith that everything is illusion. Therefore, I can remain with my selfless self. The more I remain with my selfless self, the more I see that, yes, it is absolutely true. It is illusion. There is the reward of the sense of presence, which when I continuously hold this sense of presence and I sip this nectar of immortality and I don't go out to the illusory world, the reward, so to speak, the I am with the I am with the I am with the I am, and then the subtle knowing that this I am, I know that I am. I am that that knows I am. Now I'm just here. And now I can use the body to sense the I am, the sense of presence, the sense of existence. But I don't have to be caught up in the illusory world. Master told me the illusory world was not true. I've now proven this to my own self that it's not true. My perspective is no longer tainted by believing I'm a body and a world. Therefore, this flow of thoughts is never identified with about my thinking or my thoughts. Or your behavior one way or the other. <laughs> yes, yes. Because then you have to identify with the body as, um, you know, something that did something wrong or that, you know, wished it did something else. Yeah, no, it's just spontaneous actions with no actor. You're not assigning an actor to any of the actions that are occurring. And yet, it's not like, the, you know, a lot of egoistic thinking would be, oh, well, then you go and rob banks and do this and do that. No, 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 you won't, because there's no, there's no like, what's the point? <laughs> You're just with yourself. <laughs> it's like, I'm just with myself. That's then it. You could go to jail and be with your selfless self all the time. <laughs> Well, you might be interrupted by other various forms and, you know, no, that wouldn't be good. 
<laughs> doesn't sound like a good choice. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't sound like a good choice. A good use of this time holding this body. The body is the birth of time. You're experiencing everything through this body form because you're the holder of the body. But in reality, you're not experiencing anything. And you'll know this when the body is no more. Just as in the dream, you can be experiencing, you can be swimming and all the water feels very real and everything. Maybe you're even drowning in your dream and suddenly you wake up. You're not wet. You never were drowning. But the appearance and the experience seemed so real at the time. Oh. Well, it looks it, like it is time, yes? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Kate. Enjoy your evening. Peace.